Right, so today we're going back to our compact toolkit, which we did around about a year ago. Uh, and we did this uh, for me to use as a toolkit because I'm uh, not using the big rolling toolbox as much anymore. So it's nice to have a toolkit with you in the car. So this is where this has been stored for the last year. And uh, we're gonna do a review of it, what's working and what's not working. And then hopefully we're gonna do Mark II and make it better. So what I'll do is I'll do a quick review, a quick roundup of what's in this toolkit before we start talking about how we can make it better. So uh, this toolkit has been pretty good over the last year. I've been using it at least every week I get this kit out to use something from it. Uh, and it's held up really well. And some of the items are priceless to have them in there. And then some of the items in a full year, I've never used them. And that's why we know we can make a better toolkit than this. So to start off with, we've got um, a full set of Allen keys, which is one of the most useful items in this kit whether you're building a set of furniture or you need to just take the uh, the side off a machine or whether you just need to uh, th throw something together quickly allen keys are always going to be uh, a really useful tool and you'd always want in a compact set now the temptation is to get a little folding set which uh, we had considered because obviously it's a much smaller form factor but typically when you want an allen key you need well, a ball end is also very helpful, but not only that, having the full length of it and having it free and not tied to like a, a set of like a Swiss Army knife style set of Allen keys. So this has been invaluable and we'll definitely keep this in the set. And it's quite non-traditional. If you compare it to like a Weira set of Allen keys, uh, which is the exact same amount of Allen keys, you've got 10 mil down to 1.5, which is the same as this, but you can see the footprint of it is at least double, if not more. Um, so this set is made by Crescent uh, and we've actually switched out. The, the Allen keys that came with it weren't very good. I think I rounded one off uh, and they weren't chrome, they weren't stainless steel, so they weren't going to last me a long time. This set is by Pro Cycling and it, we've taken the chrome Allen keys out of the Pro Cycling holder, which was much bigger, and put it into this really nice form factor holder by Crescent. And moving on from there, we've got something called a Fisher Space Pen which is basically just a right anywhere pen. So it's quite handy to have it. Moving on, we've got, this is a tire pressure gauge. This is an example of one of the items that we, I've never had out of the kit ever. So that will be getting um, removed. We've also got a Zippo lighter, very handy to just have one available, have one in the kit. And we've got a little uh, a level. This is something that on the face of it, it sounds very handy to have it, but not being magnetic and being so small, it's not been used very often. Um, moving on, we've got this, which is a micro sh precision screwdriver, and it's got the bits in it in the uh, in the body of it. And now this is one of the items that I've used an awful lot because just being around the house trying to put batteries in a toy or trying to uh, repair something small, having those precision micro bits are really really handy. But the one thing that's sad about this is there's not very for the amount of space it takes up. There's not many bits in the head. There's only about four or five, um, so we can make an improvement on that. Moving forward, we've got a torch. This is a Cree LED torch, uh, which is really bright, but there's no other function to it. So I'm hoping we can improve on a, the torch as well. So this is a Nipex utility key, which folds out and you've got four different panel keys in here. And then it's also a bit driver and a volt detector. Um, but sadly, the volt detector, I don't find to work very well. Uh, and the bit driver, because it's a plastic molding, you can't, um, really get much torque on a screw without the feeling of it twisting within the within the plastic. So it doesn't, I don't use it at all. And then, well, when I bought it, I thought it was a fantastic idea because it's been so small. Um, but sadly, a lot of the panels that I go to open, um, this won't work for because um, every machine manufacturer has a different kind of panel key. So sadly, I usually end up carrying one in my pocket, a separate one. Uh, moving forward, we've got a six inch adjustable, which is always fantastic to have, handy to have. Uh, the only reservation is, I, it's nice to have the pro proper size spanner really in a toolkit and not to, not to use a, an adjustable at all. Um, and then following that, we've got a permanent mark under there, always priceless to have one of those on you. Then we've got, this is the Milwaukee Fastback Utility Knife, which is a fantastic, really nicely built, nice weight to it knife. Um, and it's also the model with the little holder for some additional blades, which is great to have. Obviously I've used them all up, but, uh, and this knife has been fantastic. It locks in this position or it can lock in this position and it's just really useful for cutting all, all manner of things. I think the last thing I was doing with this of any substance other than opening boxes was carpet fitting. 
and I was just putting a little bit of carpet in to be able to fold it down like that it was fantastic um, so I love that then we've got a Leatherman Rev which I use regularly for the pliers but that is just it there's all of the other function on this tool uh, is redundant it's not used so we will be replacing this Leatherman with uh, a proper set of pliers because you can't get as much purchase that you would that you would want with a set of pliers sadly because you can feel it squeezing and and potentially buckling under your hands so that's going to be getting switched out as is this which is just a standard this is made by beta uh, and it's just a standard like flip knife and it's been you can see all of the goo on it it's been used mainly opening boxes um, but it's not really it's redundant really it's taking up space that we don't need following on we've got a bit set this is made by um, I can't remember actually, I think maybe Amtec, so it's quite a low quality um, bit set, but it's handy to have it. Um, the reality with a bit set is though, you don't use a lot of these sizes. You know, a, one or two good posi drive, one or two good flathead would be more than enough than having this whole kind of chunk of space taken up. Uh, we've also got this little bit driver, which is far more useful than this one, because uh, it can get in tight spaces. It's metal, you can get more purchase on it. And then to finish up, we've got this 3.5 meter tape measure, and we also have a little compact multimeter, which is fantastic. This is one of the tools I've used far more regularly than this vault detector, because you can, um, you can check if you've got um, continuity with something, just a quick check, or if you've got power. Obviously, you wouldn't want to rely on it and risk your life check doing a power check on it, but it's nice to be able to check if you've got continuity somewhere, or if you're just looking for a blown fuse. This is fantastic, and it's so small. Uh, so we're definitely going to be keeping this as well. So overall as a kit, um, this Amazon case has been fantastic. It's, uh, it's held up to kind of daily wear and tear, it's got chucked around. And to say that this case cost £9 and it was sold on the premise of being a, a GoPro case, I think we've really proved the point that you can take pretty much any case and remove the, the guts from it, put a piece of shadow foam in it and basically reuse it. Um, so what we wanted to do is uh, improve on this case with a bigger case. So you can see that this one is a good two inches wider and it's about an inch deeper as well, as well as being a little bit higher. So this should be perfect. Uh, now this case when it arrived was the exact same as the 13 inch model with a molded tray in the bottom. But we've actually cut that out so all we did was just cut round with a utility knife and then the insert just peeled out and you can see the hot glue lines from where that insert was glued in in the factory. But just a sharp knife all the way around the edge and that peeled away, no problem. And then a piece of shadow foam, this was from our website, this is a shadow foam original in grey and this was around about, probably about six or seven pounds. And then we've cut radiuses on the corners and then that drops straight in the case and we've got now a ready to go compact tool case uh, but better than that it also comes with a panel as the similar to the 13 inch model this one came with a panel as well uh, which we can sit on the top to create a second layer um, because as this is a deeper case we can fit two layers of tools in here and we can really go for uh, the most efficient and useful toolkit hopefully so let's, uh, let's go through what items we're going to be putting in it. Uh, firstly, there are some items in this case here which we're definitely going to keep because they are fantastic. Uh, those being, to start with, the Allen keys. Um, the Allen keys are the most compact form factor Allen keys I can find. Uh, another item we're going to be keeping is the, um, is the tape measure. We're going to keep that. We're going to keep the Milwaukee utility knife because it's one of the best utility knives out there. It's also got this little... Um, this little safety cutter on the end and it's also got room for blades to be stored so it's a fantastic item uh, we're also going to be keeping the, the lighter we're going to be keeping the Fisher Space Pen and then we've also got this multimeter which we're going to be keeping because it's so compact and so useful and I think that's pretty much it from that case we can improve on the bit set we can improve on the level we can improve on the knives and leatherman the utility key we definitely can improve on this so from that kit everything else we can improve on so let's have a look what we're going to be going for now the one thing i'll mention about this tool set is it's going to be geared towards me and what i need um, so obviously if you were doing the same compact tool kit you could tailor this infinitely for your needs and for the things that you um the things that you're likely to be doing because uh, 
To me, the most compact and efficient toolkit is the toolkit that fulfills the most tasks that you're likely to complete. So to start with, we're gonna re be replacing the Nipex utility key with another Nipex utility key. Um, but this one being um, two halves that magnetize and go together. And that will open eight different panel doors rather than four, um, which is gonna be far better. We're also gonna change over from this dodgy vault stick that doesn't work very well to a much more reliable model by Fluke. To be able to just check if a cable's live so quickly with this is priceless. So that's going in the kit. Uh, we're also gonna be improving this small level um, to this one by Milwaukee. Uh, this one is magnetic, which is the best to start with because when you're putting on like a metal patrus on a wall, you wanna magnetize it to the box, but also it's uh, adjustable, so it can be for horizontal or vertical level. So it's quite, it's a significant size difference, but if you look at torpedo level or other options, this is one of the most compact ones you can choose. Um, we're also gonna be changing this item, which is the precision screwdriver, and we're gonna be upgrading that to this, which kind of looks like, it, to me, it looked like a USB backup or a, a battery backup, but it's actually, a fantastic little screwdriver set. Uh, another one from Amazon. We'll put some of these links in the description below, but the precision bits are magnetized into the holder. The little aluminium screwdriver here has got a rotating bit on the end. It's a fantastic kind of quality feel to it. It clips into the box nicely. So the form factor is really nice. It's just a nice, uh, solid, compact little kit. And I think this was in the region of about 18 to 20 pounds. So it was really, really good value for what it is. The next item we're gonna change up is the torch. So uh, I think I, I included this one in the kit because it's what I had. Uh, I think it was around about six or seven pounds. Uh, it's an aluminium, nice solid torch, and it's quite bright. But the sad thing is there's not much other function to it other than a torch that you hold in your hand. So we're gonna change it for this one by, uh, it's called Big Larry uh, by Nebo. And it's much brighter but the better thing about it is it's, um, it's got a really strong magnet on one end of it. So you can kind of attach it to things. That's probably a bad example attaching it to that. It's just pulled all the things. And the one that we're gonna go for is this called Big Larry by Nebo. And it's super bright. It's got a couple of different brightnesses, which that one only has one. Uh, and it also has a really strong magnet on the end. So you can actually attach it to wherever you're working to shine some light on what you're doing. So that's a much better option. Obviously it's a little bit bigger, but I think um, kind of my argument about this toolkit is that um, compact versions of things is not really a better version. You don't really want a compact version of a, a screwdriver and a compact version of a spanner um, because to do the job properly, you kind of want the full size version with you. So it, there's gonna be a balance within this toolkit of having some kind of space saving ideas versus having the full size version of an item. Uh, and on that note, um, this has been one of the big letdowns of the kit. Being, this is the only plier within this small kit and it's just not sufficient really for most jobs. So we want to change it out to something along these lines. This is a, a Nipex Cobra, which is fantastic, really wide jaw on it. It's a solid tool, but sadly this is a little bit too big. So we're going to compromise and go with this item, which is uh, also a Nipex grip, which goes not quite as wide, but this will work as a plier, but it's also will work as a second kind of spanner, which is a much better item. And it's got the, um, the smaller form factor. Following that, we're gonna be adding this tool. So these are VDE uh, or electrically insulated, uh, because if you're cutting a cable, you do, it is better to have that protection than not have it. Now this is a Nipex multi-tool, um, which provides a couple of functions, which is kind of what we're looking for in this kit. We want to kind of have a few multifunction items. This item alone is a wire stripper, a pair of long nose pliers, um, and kind of a bull nose plier as well in, in reality, because not only have they got the long kind of reach of a long nose plier, and they've got the kind of narrow point, they've also got kind of the, the wide jaw here that a bull nose plier would have. We're also going to be adding another Nipex item, which is a wire cutter or a bolt cutter. Now, Nipex make a few different models of these. This is the shortest bolt cutter they do. In a case like this, where we're trying to save as much space as possible, having this um, slim grip 
means we've got a much smaller form factor item. Now I spent quite a while deciding what I was going to do um, for a, a, an adjustable spanner option and it took a lot of research to find an item. So we are switching this one item for two. We're going to be switching it for a Baco 4 inch adjustable because when it comes to small nuts and bolts, a big, of a, a big adjustable is no, no help, no use, no ornament. But we're going to be putting alongside that this large Stanley, um, this is 10 inches I think, yeah 10 inch adjustable. Um, and this is a multifunction. This is, this is sold by Stanley as a demolition bar. Um, and essentially it's a pry bar, but it's also like a nail puller that you'd have on a claw hammer. Uh, it's a hammer, you can see the hammer face there, and it's obviously a 12 inch adjustable. So what else have we got? So we're going to be losing the tyre pressure gauge, uh, and we're going to be losing this item. We're going to be changing it out for this weir stubby screwdriver, which is fantastic in and itself, just the fact that it's a bit driver. But there's a next level to this, in which in the head of the screwdriver, it houses um, six bits. So we've got three posi drives bits there, three sizes and three sizes of flathead, plus the one in the holder. So that's a fantastic little upgrade that we're gonna go for. On the screwdriver front, we're gonna be adding a Weira set of electrically insulated screwdrivers. So this set um, basically solves the problem I was mentioning before, which is with a bit set, the blade of the, um, or the holder for the bit is so wide and chunky you can't typically get down most screw, get down holes to most screws. So the Weira set is a similar sort of system to the bit system. Uh, however, it's the full blade is replaced. So that slides into the handle and forms what is just a, look, a standard looking screwdriver. You know, to the naked eye, it just looks like a normal screwdriver. But you can press down this yellow little lever here and then you can change it out to another one. We are getting a little bit uh, ambitious now, but it's my belief that if you can use the correct size spanner over an adjustable, you should. And then to, finish, to, to follow on from that, um, typically when you need a spanner, you need two spanners. You know, quite a lot of the jobs you're gonna be doing where you need a spanner, you're gonna need two 13 mils, one on each side. So having an adjustable for the one side and then having the correct size spanner for the other is uh, definitely very handy. So these are Weira Joker spanners and essentially they are a really good quality ratchet spanner which is reversible. You just flip it over, they don't have the little catch on them like some do. Um, but more than that, they're also what I'd call a 12 point spanner and a six point spanner. So the way these work is that a, a nut can drop in there and it won't fall through so it'll hold the nut. Uh, so you can kind of get into an awkward space and put them on. And they're just a really good weighted, nice quality um, spanner, which isn't gonna be, uh, which isn't gonna rust and it's gonna stand the test of time. We're also gonna be adding um, this tool, um, which is, you may have seen this, potentially in Facebook ads, maybe just on the internet on Amazon, but this is a, um, oh, I don't know the exact name for it, but it's basically an adaptable socket. So it's got these little pins that press down, uh, and this one sec, uh, this one socket with a, this has got a three eighths to a quarter inch bit adapter on the end. So this can go into a standard can. It could even go into this little thing here, this little stubby driver. And literally, that the the only time I use it is for putting in eyelets and eye hooks because otherwise they kill your fingers. So you can put them in there and then you can drive them in. But in reality, you could use this for any size socket up to 19 mil. Following on from that, we're going to add another bit driver. Now this is made by Gear Wrench, and the reason why we're going to choose this will become clear in a minute, in a moment. But uh, essentially, um, this is just a ratcheting handle, and there's two heads that come with it. You've got uh, the first head has a quarter-inch bit on the end, and then the second head has a quarter-inch uh, square bit for sockets. Uh, you also have an adapter that comes with it, and then you can extend the bit driver. And then on top of that, we also have just a standard bit to convert it over. So those items go really well with this set. They call it tool check, and it's got a full set of metric bits up to 13 mil. It's also got a very small little bit driver, and it's got a, a bit adapter for a drill. Um, and with this, in combination with this, essentially, 
you create a full set of nut spinners, which is something that we use quite a lot. I use quite a lot. Um, a lot of panels are held on uh, on machines with 20 or so 8 mil bolts. So to whip round those as quick as you can, having a little uh, nut driver, nut spinner, uh, is fantastic. And then just to continue on that same theme, we're also going to include this little quarter inch ratcheting driver. Uh, it's quite nice and small and it'll go with this set as well to give us even more um, options. Right, so the next item that we're going to include is um, this small lock picking set, um, also from Amazon. Uh, a lock pick set may seem like an odd choice, but obviously this kit is for me and what I think is going to be most useful for the situations I'm in. Uh, and um, the lock pick, uh, there's no kind of uh, dark reason for this, but it's the role that I used to fill, not so much anymore, was being a contractor and going supporting engineering departments in different factories. And, Quite a common call out for the engineering team would be lost keys, forgotten keys, um, people, machines with like machine keys that have been lost or snapped and uh, the ability to have a very basic lockpick kit like this and to be able to kind of just jimmy a lock uh, is quite invaluable really and obviously these are very, this is a very, very low cost item and also a very small amount of space that it takes up. Following that we're on to the last couple of items now so when you need a pair of scissors there's no real replacement for them. And um, but when you think of the typical footprint of a scissor like this, it's so big, you would never be able to include normal scissors in a set like this um, and kind of get bang for your buck when it comes to the space you're using. So uh, doing some research, I found this great little pair of scissors made by Leatherman and they're called Raptor. They fold down into such a small size like this. And finally, something a little bit different in this kit, we've got this Altoids tin. Now you see the kind of EDC guys and the EDC, um, the, uh, the, the kind of prepper community use these Altoid tins quite often to carry small items um, around with them or within other smaller kits. So on that notion, we're gonna do the same in this kit because there are quite a few handy little items we can include in this kit that you wouldn't wanna cut them in foam, but at the same time, you would want them in the kit. So just to go briefly through what's in here, we've got um, a little spool of like piano wire and we've got a few uh, wagos. These are electrical connectors which having a few of these on hand as an electrician, or as, like I say, my background is in electrics, uh, having these in your toolkit is amazing, uh, really invaluable. And I'll probably actually take out some of these items and just fill it predominantly with Wagos. Uh, but we've also got this tiny little True Utility, um, this is a tiny little lighter. We've also, True Utility also make this tiny little telescopic pen, which is another little item, which is a backup, you know. In this kit, we're gonna be having this Fisher Space pen which is like a right anywhere pen, but let's say it breaks or runs out and uh, lets you down, you've got a spare one in this tin. We've also got this tiny little, um, I don't know the exact name of it, but um, they call it a Yankee screwdriver when it's got the same style on a screwdriver. And essentially you place it where you want to drill and you push down and it's got a very small little chuck on it for small little pilot drills essentially. And um, it fits in this tin perfectly. So it's another little item that we can include um, following that, we've got a big paper clip, we've got a safety pin, we've got another little pin, a few items, and this is a tiny little, a really small precision screwdriver. I can't remember where this came from, but it's tiny and it's a handy little thing to have in the kit. Um, I think that is left over from a little survival kit that we did actually, a flint and steel. So I don't think that'll be kept in here, but you know, you could tailor this kit however you wanted it to. So in here we've got um, what have we got left? We've got a hairpin, we've got another little pin, and then this is uh, another little survivalist item which is probably could also come in useful as a toolkit because it's a bottle opener, it's a few little different metric size um, nut spinners there. Uh, I believe this is to, uh, you put a pin with this to create a compass, and then you've got a blade as well. So also another item that's not really doing any harm, just hanging around in this tin. Right, so that is everything that we want to try and fit in this case. So we have been pretty specific with the items that we said we want to include. And the reason for that is because although we spent a long time talking about what's going in it, we didn't want to spend a load of time, uh, we didn't want to waste a load of your time working out how it was going to fit in here because that is the long process. Figuring out the layout is the most difficult part. So what we've actually done is taken the time to do that beforehand. So we are gonna do some foam cutting in this video, but the bottom layer, we've actually already pre-cut. That 
that's the that's the benefit of foam. You can use the 3D space and you can use the, the, the little gaps and spaces underneath. So in one location there, we've got all of the screwdriver bits for the Weira set, bar one, which will go in the top. And then we've also got our bit set. So that is the bottom layer. And on top of that, we're gonna be putting the panel that came with the case is gonna sit on top and allow us to include a second layer of foam. And then obviously we can also put documents in there if you want to. So onto the next layer. As you can see, we've still got a fair amount of tools left um, for the top section, which we're gonna cut now. Um, so to start with, we're gonna try and cut in the bigger items, which can be uh, the trickiest um, because taking up the most space, the small items can then go around and fill up the gaps. So uh, we've already kind of planned out, a, planned a layout because we don't want to waste your time with that. So we're going to be looking at something along the lines of, um, we're going to try and double stack the spanners and put them one on top of the other. something like that and then what we're going to do with this uh, bit set because a lot of these bits are redundant essentially the sockets we will want to include so we're going to be taking those off of the holder and we're going to be putting those in loose and we're probably going to fill in the gaps with these so hopefully the layout will be roughly somewhere around here but let's start cutting them in and we'll see where we get to Right then, so that's the whole liner finished. Obviously we cut so many foam liners, we didn't want to uh, bore you with the whole process. Um, but if you do want to see exactly how we cut all these different shapes of tools, have a look back on our channel. Uh, I think last week's video was all about Shadow Foam Original cutting a full toolbox, so have a look. But this time we thought we'd just skip forward and show you putting all the tools back in the case and show you how we managed to fit them all in. So. That's the base layer all finished. And then we've got the, the panel that came with this little case, goes in, and then we'll pop uh, this foam layer that we've just been cutting. So with this, what we've done is, we've put the adapter on the end of that, then we've put the second kind of replacement head underneath. So that wraps it up. The, um, what I would class as the most compact, efficient tool case there could be. And what we've done is uh, we've added a little strap handle to um, the panel that came with the case, just to allow us to lift out that top layer a little bit quicker and easier. It's been cut to length, um, kind of glued together, and then making a loop, and then it can just kind of lift this in and out. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, obviously it's a little bit uh, different for us to kind of go into such depth on the actual tools themselves, uh, but we thought we're doing a lot of cutting foam and with this one, because there's been a lot of time and thought put into the items in this toolkit, we thought we'd give you a bit of a breakdown about some of the decisions and, and uh, some of the thought process behind putting this kit together. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more, uh, we've got uh, we, we've done a Makita wall and we're planning on doing a version two on that as well. We're pretty confident we can make the Makita wall even better than it is. So uh, if you like the idea of that, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications because we are trying to post videos on a Friday, but sometimes we throw a curveball and post at different times. So if you've got your notifications on, you won't miss out on anything. And uh, please like the video if you did, 
uh, and give us a thumbs up, that'd be fantastic. So thanks very much, everyone.